Well, it's magic time again. Well, look at you and your little poodle apron. I decided I wanted an apron on because I'm getting, I'm already getting flour all over myself. Well, you look like you're getting a little paunchy there too, the way that thing is. Perhaps I shouldn't have it up. Uh, <laughs> Get it under my roll. Uh, <laughs> Taping a new show today, ladies ah, and gentlemen. Oh, get out of I'm town. I'm sorry, I just said that. That's ridiculous. I saw it. They did, look at this. I mean, is this. Please, Are do they not. a little subtle around here these days? Uh -huh. you see, can you see? Hammerstrom. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Do not put glass bottles in the freezer. What's well, that all Well, we about? never do that. What's that all We are not guilty Why of that. Why are they so huffy about it? Oh, there's. Because, because one broke. Oh. oh, because one broke. Oh. Jim said. I had a bottle of non alcoholic wine froze and broke in my refrigerator, not even in the freezer. Get you a good deal on some pickles. Oh, get back in there with those things. Good grief. What are we doing today? Let's get the witch in I'm here. going home. I don't have, to. oh, maybe I won't. The witch is here. And she's not coming back. Take your time, Mr. Well, Johnson. Dear gentlemen, do any of the other folks who work on your show cook at all? One might imagine that they are probably turned off by your shenanigans. Hmm. Are we right? Mm -hmm. Yours truly, Clara Bell of Snively, Utah. Well, I guess. What's it mean? Well, I, Doris, you know, is over in the foreign land. She is in. She and Harold are in Paris, France. Paris, France. They I tell are. you, we got to start working on the other side of the cameras. She'll, I think they're going. And, and there's no telling what she'll bring back, because no, you no. know, Doris is. Doris is very brassy. She'll ask for anything. She's liable to ask for a piece of the Eiffel Tower. Who knows? And uh, <clears throat> so she'll be back with us next time. But uh, but we have a secret person yes, coming we do. in later on, and we can't tell you. Yes, yeah, but just, uh, oh, I'm doing recipe. chicken gumbo. <clears throat> well, I'm doing some kind of sweet potato mess. This is called the day before <laughs> payday chicken gumbo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you got to run it cheap. Sent in by Jacqueline Marie Sandol of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the first thing I got to do, and I'm not doing very much, right. so I hope your recipe takes up a little no, time. No, mine's real short. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We'll be doing a little dance and fandango here after a while. We'll uh -huh. have to run some some kind of movie trailers <clears throat> or something. Well, I brought some extra material. Is this thing getting hot? I got to take some olive oil and coat the bottom of this pan. Mm -hmm. A little bit more, I think. I'm going to make a roux. All right. All right? Which is Your sort of a paste. The day. Right. Sort of a paste. But I got to heat it up real good. You don't want to put your flour in there until it starts smoking a little bit. All right. Well, while you're doing that, let me do something over here. Uh, this recipe is for sweet potato casserole sent in by Tipsy of uh, Bluefield, West Virginia. <laughs> that's, Tipsy. It, that's what they put on the letter, Tipsy. And if you lived in Bluefield, a couple never of right. jokes. <laughs> yeah, a couple of jokes got to mind, but keep them. No, we don't want to start doing West Virginia jokes here on the Virginia show. You start with two 16-ounce cans of sweet potatoes. Now, at the time of the year, which is the spring, when we're taping the, these shows, you can find canned sweet potatoes in the grocery store. I went to the biggest one in the whole area, and sure enough, this, they only had one kind of sweet potatoes, and it was yams. And you start by putting them down, and the cans, incidentally, are 15 ounces, not 16 ounces, naturally. And you put them down into the... Uh, we get a lot of that, don't we? Yep into a casserole and oh this is another one of those recipes that you can do it right out of your pantry if you've got stuff like this saved. I have done some fine rice and brought along with it. This is the boil and bag rice with best uh -huh. stuff ever invented besides gasoline maybe. And uh, I love it. And I fixed this yesterday because at the end of this recipe it says if you have some leftover rice you may want to either serve it on it or throw that in there too. So we'll just throw that in there is what we'll do. I right. boiled this up yesterday afternoon for us fresh. And uh, now I'm going to put in a cup of honey. Honey. And it, I had to get this kind came in a bear. Oh and it's been sealed. For your protection. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think you ever know. You'll never get it open with your bare fingernails. It takes a claw hammer to open these things. Well, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. And don't forget it. <laughs> All right, this is a cup of honey. And Larry, if you need to do something, just. No, no, not really. You know, I'm just, I, I'm thinking about going home. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's funny. You know, I my heard recipe some of is so short that, uh, that my recipe is so short that I just kept my car running. It's, uh -huh. it's running out on the lot right now. I'm waiting for this uh, oil to heat up a little oh, bit, and this is, is one of our slow stove days. Is it on? It's plugged in. It's, you know, there's a big old wire going back through the studio, so I think it's on. Now, you got to sift, and it's very important that you sift. Yeah, it's getting there. All right, you got to sift a little flour into this. Oh, that's perfect. Well, now I have besmirched the good name of this fine stove, and it's working just beautifully. Just beautifully. And what we're going to do is brown this. Brown it real well. And that's going to take a while. Yeah. I don't know how much to put in, do you? Yeah, and put in a little more. Yeah, that's not enough, is it? Well, that's a cute little sifter. That's Tootsie's old sifter. I inherited mm -hmm. that. God rest her soul. She left me that. It's the only thing she left me. <laughs> just joke. Just oh, joke. How just terrible. Terrible. She's rolled yeah, over in the grave again. <laughs> Oh. No, if she if she did that every time I said something untoward, she'd be twirling all the time, 24 hours well, a day. Well, I expect she is. <laughs> Listen, if she raised me and made it through, your your other aunt won't even speak to you. <laughs> well, anyway, just treated Treva so bad. Yeah, you got to kind of keep this stuff moving around. You, and what you make this thicker than a great. You know these dentures. I don't know I what. I know it, they're not good. Oh, uh, I got those ones you buy from television. You know that doctor that comes on. Uh, I don't have dentures. I really don't have dentures. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is a roux is much thicker than a gravy. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, yes. at least. It's the basis for it's the gravy. It's the basis for the gravy. That's right. Well, look, could I borrow your measuring cup? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lair. What? Your uh, <laughs> your highlights are getting right high. On are they head. are they <laughs> sticking up? <laughs> no, oh, they don't just, get a close up. Don't get a close up, please. I I just think that maybe the well, roots looks are out beginning of, to show. Out of control, aren't they? Reminds me of another friend of ours. We won't mention any names on the air. No, we get in trouble. <laughs> we get in big trouble. All oh, this is turning beautifully brown. Beautifully brown. Now while that is browning, I'm going to open up some smoked sausage. You know, down in New Orleans, one of my favorite cities in the whole world, and absolutely the best city to eat in anywhere, down in New Orleans when they make a gumbo or something like this, they use something called andouille sausage, mm -hmm. which is a very special sausage. I couldn't find any of that at that low-down grocery store that I shop that at. With You're lucky if they even have any kind of such things. Does this need to be thicker, do you think? Yeah. I think it does too. I'm having a little problems with my roux, folks. Yeah. I'm afraid I'm... There you go, that, that'll enough. do it. Yeah, that ought to do it. Oh, look well, at I'm that. sprinkling a, a cup of coconut over my You sweet know, potatoes. I'm just thinking of putting some, putting some uh, bacon in there and just making a gravy and eating it over biscuits. <laughs> There'd be a lot simpler in this recipe you got to watch that pretty carefully. This is a very hot, hot stove yes. right now. So anyway, I'm going to chop up but some But you want to make sure the, the flour gets cooked. That's right, cooked. cooked or it'll taste real flour. It'll have a bad taste yeah. to it. So I'm just going to chop up some, uh, I have some sausage here. What cut off? It did get kind of quiet. So noisy it? there for a while. And, and don't forget, of course, we have a special guest coming in, a secret guest coming in here very shortly. <sighs> it's about to wear me out. I haven't done anything. Now, you're supposed to also chop up about two pounds worth of chicken. And uh, Hammerstrom is cracking this gun. Uh -huh. Have you noticed? And because we do this show in real time with no stops or edits, it requires 45 minutes of cooking time. So I went on ahead yesterday. Where is it? I virtually can't. There it is. I went on ahead and pre-cooked the chicken. So well. all I have to do is chop it and throw it in there today. I think that I'm probably going to have to take that off of there. I think your roux is done. I think it is. Right where it done needs for. to be, and I'm going to get it over there until I get finished with my chopping and everything. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. it well, that's good, a too. lot of sausage. Well, it, it is right smart. Perhaps I shouldn't have put all of it in there. I just, I was talking. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, take this little piece home for the children. Okay, now also have to, what? 
It was supposed to be a pound. How much was that? It looked at least like five to me. Oh, I don't yeah. know. A large I'm onion just kidding. goes. All right, well, now I've, I've added onion. a cup of coconut. Now I'm going to put in a, a cup of pecan pieces sprinkled in here. Here's a cup if you need it. Thank you. I'm and, chopping an onion at this point. And this finally, is the chopping part of the show. It's always boring. I need a cup of pineapple. Crushed, and I got crushed. I was had trouble with the pineapple shelf several times lately. And I'm also going to chop up this chicken breast. This is skinless, boneless, everythingless, tasteless, tasteless, gumless. And I'm going to chop that up to put it in there. Normally you would cook this chicken in there and the juices from the chicken would be a part of the sort of the gumbo stock. But as I say, I sort of had to prepare this one a little bit in advance. So uh, uh, I went on ahead and did it this way. And we'll be assembling all of this momentarily. But I just have some chopping that needs to be done first. Right. Well, I've got my pineapple in. And, uh, well, it's not a very complicated pineapple. recipe. John. No, it's real easy to put together. Even we'll you see. can do it. We'll see if it's any good. I believe I should have drained the sweet potatoes, but it won't make that much difference. Well, yeah, I think I would have. But you just mix it all up real pretty and nice. And you have to bake it until everything is heated through. And I'm going to do it in the, the micrometer oven. Uh huh. Oh, if I can lift it. Well, while he's doing that, I'm going to put this roux back on the stove. And I'm going to add the secret ingredient, which is a can of beer. What would you say? A can of beer. and five cups of water. And give or take a few cups. Put that in there also. What kind of beer did you use? Uh, I don't know. Just Why? regular? Just the old regular old beer. Okay. Yeah, just some old stuff I had laying around that nobody wanted. And well, we're going to start well, adding all this stuff While out. you're doing that, why don't I give my recipe? Okay. Why don't you? All right. The sweet potato casserole from Tipsy and Bluefield, uh, you need two 16-ounce cans of sweet potatoes, a cup of honey, a cup of pecans chopped, a cup of grated coconut, and uh, a cup of crushed pineapple. You mix it all together uh, and uh, heat it until it's thoroughly... Uh, warmed all the way through and that's my recipe for today. You know, I don't think this pan's big enough. <laughs> I think I've got too much food in here. Mm -hmm. I'll never be able to move it around. Now, we got to add to that a little bit of garlic. How much? A right smart. Not a really. A uh, chopped onion, a large clove of garlic. garlic. One for mama. And uh, also, uh, a, a little cayenne pepper. pepper, and we're also going to add a uh, quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and a fresh hot. Oops! Ooh. Greatest to plenty on that. <clears throat> Burn your lips off on that one. Well, it's a much bigger thing than it's supposed to be, so I don't think mm -hmm. anyone's going to like die or anything. You want to read my recipe? Yeah, I let just, me read Larry's recipe. Do. The day before payday chicken gumbo, one and a half cups sifted flour, olive oil for the roux. And then for the gumbo, a large onion chopped fine. I sure am glad I bought this uh, big pan. A large there. clove of garlic sh chopped fine, a can of beer, five cups of water, salt to taste, one fresh hot pepper, <laughs> one pound sausage cut up in quarter inch slices, uh, one or two pounds of chicken cut up, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I got. I brought the peppers in pre-chopped because I didn't want to mess with them today. Well, that's perfectly so all right. Go Just do what you want to. Chop on those a little bit. Well, while you're doing that, let's run the Cook Sisters in here. All right. Fine with me. We what can, are they going to talk about today? Do we know? Who knows? Never know. They were whispering down in the in the dressing room a little while ago, so we'll find out. Tell them to watch your step here. Hey, ah. sis. <laughs> 
Sorry, it was a little Just tough on you. Stay away from me. You hit me on my not your closer oh, patch. Oh, your what? <laughs> Just terrible. Oh, that's oh. awful. Well, I see all those old gnarly stains on yeah. your hand from cooking. You know what you can do to get rid of those awful, horrible, gnarly stains on yeah. your hand? Just rub a raw potato on them. Well, you don't say. Will it cure the damson stain? No, but it'll get rid of that mold oh, you got in right. a couple of warts. But raw I always potato. think you get what you deserve. Well, this is Tootsie Cook. And I'm Sister Cook, and, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook sisters. sisters. Now, this stuff is supposed to cook for about 45 minutes. And obviously it isn't, but everything's pre-cooked anyway. And I have chopped up some peppers, and I'm going to put those in there at this point. And isn't that just real pretty? Well, it is. Now, if it just would cook a little bit, it's just sort of Well, the nice there. thing about both these recipes is that they don't, Essentially, everything is already cooked, and all you do is warming it up. Yeah, that's so right. So that's a, that's a big plus. But look at those thickening up already. It's thickening mm -hmm. very beautifully. But, you know, a part of, of uh, preparing this would be sort of frying the chicken in that roux and, you know, with all that flavor going through and searing it real good. But I think it's going to thicken yeah. up real nice just in time for the big doodah day. We're going to have our secret yeah. uh, person coming in here momentarily. Hint, hint. Yes. <clears throat> oh, she's on her way. Yeah, okay. Good. And don't forget now, fix some extra rice. I was going to throw that in there, but I don't believe I'll be throwing that in there. There's no room to throw that in there. Oh, you could get several spoons. You think I should yeah. put a little? I was just going to put it in. Is, is the, are those bowls what we're going to be serving this in? I reckon, yep. I was just going to put some in the bottom of the bowl. You know, I've seen it done okay. that way in restaurants. In the highfalutin restaurants, you can do that. Well, as you know, uh, the very lovely uh, Miss Doris and, and Harold are in Paris, France, and so they cannot be with us today, not even by uh, satellite. No, we couldn't afford the satellite hookup. We couldn't afford the satellite hookup, so uh, <laughs> we just barely can afford the ones we use on the air. So anyway, we have uh, somebody that you hear a great deal about, and in fact, you hear her voice, but you never, very seldom ever see her, and she is the lady who actually directs our show, actually punches the buttons of the lovely Miss Carol Jennings. Hello. How you doing? Pretty now good. the big secret here is um, we all want to know. We're just, you know, the, the inquirer wants to know. Mm -hmm. How can we be directing this show and, and switching cameras around while you're sitting? Uh, some kind of remote control device yeah. on you? Television magic is what it is. It's Actually, I understand secret. we have uh, Mr. Betcher in the yes, back. Yes, yes, uh, our vice president of programming. And he certainly is keeping us going. Mm -hmm. It's all right, mm -hmm. John. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> what, what did you do? This is something called frog eye salad. Oh, yes. Oh, frog eye oh, salad. Yes. From uh, Mary Johnson of Madison Heights, Virginia. Mm. It's bad enough people are going out and ripping <laughs> the legs off the poor little things. <laughs> no, and Taking their mm. eyes out. <laughs> Well, this has got a very unusual type of macaroni in it that looks sort of like frog eyes. I'll hold this over the bowl. Camera 4 can get this oh, started. Oh, that's real attractive. Yeah. And it starts off, it's, well, I won't show that. Very small macaroni, needless Actually, to I say. Actually, I think it looks, more like, it looks more like fish eggs. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Now, do you guys have any idea how to say the name of this macaroni? Because well, I don't have a clue. Let me see. I, well, Mr. I, Johnson is our resident <clears throat> expert in uh, that is apology. Oh, a chini di pepe. <laughs> okay. What'd well, you say? A chini di pepe. A chini di pepe. Well, he used to appear on the Sullivan Show. Uh huh. He did. And he used to be a little puppet. A little I chihuahua. Think. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh. sticking that in your mm -hmm. eye. Well, put my eye on I'm it. trying to <laughs> borrow one of your lines. Oh, the, the, <laughs> trying to stir and, and do that well, too. Well, you want me to hold it? No, I'm going to okay. cut it off because it's ready. Okay. Well, this takes a cup of the macaroni, uh, two cans of mandarin oranges. It doesn't say what size, so I got the small ones. Uh, half a cup of sugar, three eggs beaten, two cups of miniature marshmallows, a 20-ounce can of crushed pineapple, two and a half cups of water, which I cut down, otherwise this would have been a bowl the size of a swimming pool. Uh, two tablespoons of flour and eight ounces of frozen whipped topping. And what you do is you cook the macaroni and drain it. Drain the fruits, but put the juices in a pan and mix that with the flour and the oh. sugar. And you make sort of, it's almost like a custard mixed in there with that. It's just so pretty. And then after you've got your custard, mix that with the fruit and the macaroni, then put the whipped topping and marshmallows in and how long ready did, to go. How long did it take you to make this? We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it took two tries to get this stuff to thicken up. Did it really? Yeah, it did. So you but, had to do um, it twice. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> finding the ingredients on a holiday weekend, it's a spring holiday, folks, where people eat a lot of marshmallows, oranges, and pineapple.
Hmm. I got the last bag of marshmallows on the shelf. Now tell me but the anyway. truth, which side of the cameras would you really rather be on? That side. Nah, <laughs> Isn't she a natural? Let's no, give her some Doris. applause here. She's wonderful. <laughs> so I even have Doris's shirt on here. Do you really? And poor Doris is running around in Paris, France without oh, a shirt. No. Well, well, it is Paris, you know. Well, I'm going to get out of your all's way and go back to my post. Go back there and punch them buttons. That's right. And make America yeah, safe for television. running television. around over there with Harold. God love him. I don't know what's going to happen to him. Now, I want you to look at this, Mr. <clears throat> Johnson. Am I good or what? I mean, is that beautiful? Isn't that gorgeous? That is really nice. Really and is. And if you slow cook that, I mean, just look at that. It's gotten real thick and creamy. It really oh, that's has. amazing. And if you just uh, slow cook that for about 45 minutes, all those flavors would just meld together in there. And what I'm going to do for presentation purposes, now you can just take this and dump it on in there if you want to, but I think it's pretty full. So I'm just going to take uh, some of the rice and put it in the bottom of the bowl, of each bowl, like so. Do, do, do. And then I'm just going to put this in on top of it. This has got to be good for you. I mean, this is wonderful stuff, I think. Wouldn't you love to know where somebody came up with a, a recipe called frog eye salad? <laughs> well, someone was just sitting around one day and thought of it, I and guess. Didn't have anything else to do. And there it is, real pretty. Well, pretty. let's Absolutely go over pretty. to the table. It won't take us four minutes to eat it, but what that, the heck, we have no choice. So anyway, there's that and that. Now I'm going to take me, this poodle thing off. I'll be back. Let me <clears throat> give you some sweet potatoes with some of the sauce in it. Well, doesn't it look pretty? Although it mm -hmm. is right runny and juicy, I think you probably yeah. should have probably taken the... Uh, thing and drain it. And then how about serving me some of the frog eyes? All right. Would you like a, a right frog eye or a left <laughs> frog eye? One that doesn't have a cataract well, on it, Well, isn't it pretty? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Well, it certainly is interesting well, looking. And what is this pasta called? Piccini di pepe. Piccini di pepe. Hmm. Yeah. Never heard of it. Well, well, I'm we'll going to try this, this stuff. <laughs> it's referred to it as a mess. Hmm. Another 45 minutes might have uh, had some flavor to it. Mm -hmm. No, it's pretty good though, don't you think? Yeah, actually it is. I think you, you know if you cooked your chicken in this stuff, mm -hmm. it probably would. Hmm. I need a napkin. Well, could I have one? You know, mm. paper towel. Well, that's real interesting, mm -hmm. your uh, sweet potato dish. How could it not be? Well, it's got all It's got all sorts of good things in it. I wonder why it calls for canned uh, stuff. I don't know, but you, and you know, now you and I both would use fresh sweet potatoes if we're doing it at home, but sometimes when you don't have the fresh sweet potatoes or something, it's wonderful to be able to open up a can of stuff and do something with it. Mmm. Well, that's pretty good. Well, Miss Carol ought to come out from behind the control panel more often and do some cooking for us because she did a mighty fine job. She may have had to do it twice, but she did a beautiful job of that. Mm. Isn't that nice? Of course, I know it's enough to send you into a conniption fit. I won't be All that too sugar. much of any of this. But, mm. you know, this is sort of like a rice custard. Mm-hmm. You're right, it is. <clears throat> with uh, mandarin oranges. Well, it's a penny for your thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever, penny, whatever. Well, well, let me try some of this. Oh, you me. must be kidding. <laughs> How much time we We couldn't got possibly left? have one more minute. Oh, but we do. We do. <clears throat> well, tell me a story, Johnson. Well, I'll tell you a story, and I can't. What you, what you cook for your big Easter dinner at your house this year? Well... I did a German potato salad. Mm. Makes no sense whatsoever, but it was real good, and I, and I cooked out on the grill for the first time. It was a wonderful day, beautiful day. I didn't cook potato salad on the grill. Who brought these flowers, by the way? These Doris. Little, what are those, little snapdragons? <coughs> she dragons? brought them last week. Are those week. snapdragons? I think it's called a pocketbook plant, but oh, I'm not sure. Oh, pocketbook plant. Well, hmm. I had a pork tenderloin. Well, good for you. It was delicious. I'm real happy You know, for you, you can eat that. 
with heart trouble. It's the tenderloin, but uh, very little fat. Well, hey, listen, that's just been so much fun. Bye.